uh, schematic design, the building design, uh, and the interior layout uh, vignettes is, um, are, one would hope, are about the sort of content of knowing how to be an architect. Uh, the, the, you would hope that that would be the point of why you would be taking this, uh, these vignettes and taking these exams. Um, in actuality, there's really not a heck of a lot of content in there. There is some, and we'll talk about it as we go along. But both of these vignettes are essentially about uh, do you kind of do you know the program? Do you know the strategies? Do you know how to how to make your way through what is a big onslaught of information uh, that you have to move through pretty quickly? Uh, so uh, we're going to just sort of jump right in um, and start talking about these these things. Uh, the schematic design exam topic is only vignettes. It is the two vignettes, the one for the building design and one for an interior office layout. We're going to see if we can race through uh, both of those uh, tonight and just kind of get uh, a, a quick idea of some of the base strategies and how you might, uh, how, how you might move through it. Uh, so let's uh, start off with uh, the building design. And the building design is kind of an interesting thing because it's a, it's a big, uh, big project. It's a multi-hour project. Uh, it's a two-story building. You have to design the whole building. Uh, you have to you know, lay out the rooms and understand the relationships and put all the circulation in. And it, it seems really quite impressive and daunting. And most people are very nervous about the building design uh, from the schematic process. In actuality, though, this one is, in my mind, one of the easier ones. And the reason for that is you actually have a lot of time. The other vignettes all tend to be very high pressure time-wise. Uh, but this one, you have many hours to, to, to play it out. So you have plenty of time to read through the information, make your decisions, move through the design, and then go back and reread and check all that information. So uh, it's it's not nearly as daunting and uh, crazy as many people just assume uh, as a sort of a leftover of the old days when you used to have to draw a whole building out. So the big issues here, you're gonna have to follow the directions really precisely and very quickly, um, just so you have enough time to recheck it. Uh, and you're gonna wanna look for a few specific code compliance issues. That's really the big deal that's going on here. So let's uh, move on to the, uh, to the next here. Let's see. Hang on just a second. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so the first way to think about this uh, is you're just going to break it down into a few uh, fairly straightforward steps. Uh, the first thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be studying and evaluating the information that is given to you. So you've got a bunch of information. You're going to open up the program. There's going to be the, a, a drawing page. There's going to be a program page. There's going to be a code page. You want to go through, read it all, study it, find the, the important pieces of information that are unexpected. So it's not just reading it. You also want to make sure that you're evaluating it that that uh, is really a key part of the whole process. So you're, you're not just taking in the information, you're actually you finding a way to make it useful for yourself. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. So then after you've had a chance to go through all that information and, and try to get it into some form that's useful for yourself, then you're going to start diagramming and sketching. You're going to sort of move through the process and make uh, your first assumptions, of quick, quick assumptions, about how you think the process is going to go, how the design is likely to go. And you're going to use those sketches to sort of guide your next set of steps. And then the next thing you're going to do, which is a little bit sort of counterintuitive, is you're actually going to start figuring out what your corridor pattern is, so what your egress pattern. So you're not really necessarily going straight to figuring out where all the rooms are. You're really thinking about what's the backbone that's holding all of this together. So you know, do you have a corridor pattern that's you know like an L? Do you have one that's a straight line? That uh, if you start to make sure that 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 whatever concept you choose makes sense, then it's easy to start plugging in rooms that fit to that when you get to the to the next step which would be step four which is okay put the rooms in make it work put the doors in do do all of that stuff where you're really actually drawing it all out and then once you've done that you've gone through the whole process but you've gone through it reasonably quickly then you go back and then you're going to go back and check right the checking is actually just as key as anything else 
because it's a lot of information. There's going to be uh, a lot of reading, a lot of matching this room to that room. This one's near that. That one's uh, direct accessible. All those kinds of things. You have to you have to figure out what they really mean by all these different notices. And it'll be different when you read it the second time. You're quite likely to find a little piece of information here or there that you didn't understand what they really meant. And then that gives you plenty of opportunity to sort of go back, fix it, and then make it work and check it again. So key to remember here, one thing at a time. You're moving reasonably fast and you're kind of on this awkward program. The vignette programs are outdated and kind of ridiculous. Uh, you should use that to your advantage. Like that, it's it's not wildly complicated. It's not something that that uh, needs uh, a tremendous amount of nuance uh, or anything like that. It's really simple and straightforward if you let it be. So do one thing at a time and keep it simple. As you move through, you are not designing. You are doing a puzzle. It's not architecture. It's a puzzle. It has rules the way a puzzle has rules. Now the the puzzle is sort of architecture content, but it's not architecture. Don't try to make it architecture. Think of it as a puzzle. And if you do that, if you think of it as a puzzle, uh, your life will be much, much easier. So, okay, what is the building design going to be? Well, I can tell you it's going to be something just like this. It's going to be two stories. Uh, there's going to be a two-story building. There's going to be a big double height uh, space in it. So I don't know, is it going to be a small school and it's got a bunch of classrooms and then a small gymnasium that's double height? Is it going to be a library with a big reading room? Uh, is it going to be a, a fire station or something along those lines? It, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be a number of small rooms uh, or smaller rooms on two floors that essentially wrap around or abut next to a double height space. Uh, so you already know all the things that are going to come. Just by looking at that and understanding that issue, you understand that there's going to be uh, two stairs uh, at either end of the corridors. There's going to be a simple corridor line, and then there's going to be uh, some way that all of this sort of relates to each other. Now, is it in an L shape like I've shown here? Maybe. Is it a straight line? Maybe. There's a bunch of different ways. Well, you'll see a few examples as we go along. But uh, it's not going to suddenly be a four-story building or it's not going to suddenly be an airport or anything like that. It's going to be a simple two-story institutional building of some sort. So the design issues are pretty clear. Um, and while this sounds a little ridiculous to say out loud, one of them is you can't put a second floor room on top of a double height space on the first floor. Uh, so I know that sounds a little crazy that to have to actually say that. But it's actually kind of important. It's one of the things they just want to make sure that you're you're just playing by the rules that they've given you, and those are very simple and straightforward. You can't put any steps in to, to go up and over something. You don't want to even worry about it. You're going to have some big space, and then there's going to be some other two-story space next to it, or wrapped around it, or however it goes. Uh, the other important thing that's going to happen here is that the stairs and corridors are going to be in some very simple and logical egress pattern. And it's not that it's looking for that from a design standpoint. In fact, the computer really doesn't care about your design capacity. Uh, nobody is going to look at this and say it's a beautiful building. Um, if you are thinking about that at all, you're doing the wrong thing. Uh, so you are really only just making this thing logical and straightforward uh, for two reasons. One is it's going to be easier to make sure you actually caught all the egress issues. Uh, and then the other reason is the more simple and straightforward you make it, the easier it's going to be on you. The more complicated you make that uh, corridor system, that circulation system, the harder it's going to be on you to fit everything in. And then, as I said, you're going to follow the rules. And so the rules really are just the code and all the list of uh, information that comes from the program. Uh, you just have to, there's going to be lots of little things like this room gets a window and that room gets a view and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so those are all the rules that you have to follow. So that's all you're doing. There's really nothing else going on. You're making this little two-story building uh, with this one big room and then you're following the rules. Make sure the circulation is logical and has a simple uh, logical egress uh, and that you've respected that double height space. All of these sort of rules that I was just mentioning are going to fall under the category of the program, the code, and then just how you're drawing them. Mm -hmm.